All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, we're gonna talk about power and transmission shafts as it relates to mechanics of materials and torque. And what I wanna do in this video is describe the relationship between power and torsion and then do an example problem where we demonstrate how to maybe design the wall thickness of a drive shaft given some power requirements from the motor. Before we get into it, let's talk about motors real fast. And you know, when we when we think about our car or our vehicle that we drive, we think about an engine that it has. Oh, I am just drawing a box for an engine. Don't judge me, judge yourself. <laughs> and this engine drives or turns a shaft down over here in the car and then there might be like a little gearbox here and then from there there's another like shaft really extending out and those are connected to wheels boom like this right here wheels yes right here and, and there might be even be wheels coming out of this side of the engine who knows right right here boom they, that looks pretty good i'm all right with that okay but here I have this, you know, like this go-kart looking deal with this engine here, turning the shaft, delivering the power from the engine to the wheels so that the car will go in motion. And you can think of so many things that are like that, right? You can think of, you know, like an airplane with, with an engine, right? It's got an engine, yes. And, and it has got a propeller in the front of that engine, man, flying in space or in the air going round and round or or even like a boat boom a boat and here there's some engine or motor here that turns or delivers some power to some shaft here so that there can be a propeller that spins so that you can propel the boat psh, psh, psh. Yes, but the idea basically is that there's power. We associate motors and engines with power. That power is connected to shafts that are connected to other things with gears and that make that drive the machine or the equipment that we use. And so if you think about your car, you know, I think about my Toyota Camry, you know, dope. <laughs> I think about my 2003 Toyota Camry lowered with racing stripes. Just kidding. All right. And I think about the horsepowers. You know, like I say, oh, when I'm driving at a certain speed, it's delivering 120 horsepower, you know, from my engine at this RPM. And the, really the mechanics of it is by transmitting torsion. It's transferring its energy through torque. I even think about drills. And, you know, if you have, if you own a power drill, you know, you can change the torque torque setting to have more torque or less torque and that also alters the speed and the amount of power that's being delivered. Well, that relationship between power and torsion is this, this power equal to T times omega, where this T is this internal torsion that we've been associating with. This is internal torsion in the shaft. And here, omega is an angular velocity some may even call it an angular frequency, but here it's got units of radians per second. And this is equal to this internal torque times the, the angular velocity and power has units of work per time or energy per time, which would be joules and SI would be joules per second, which you one joule per second is one Newton meter per second which is also equal to one watt. And those of you who are working in the US and have to deal with foot pounds and seconds, the units of power are horsepower, one horsepower, and you're probably wondering what? And this is, you know, you've seen this for engines, right? You know, you depending on what kind of car you drive, the number of horsepower that's associated with it is it can be a selling point, right? And this horsepower is actually, you know, the units that we typically use would be 550. The conversion is 550 foot pounds per second. And really the challenge in these problems is, is typically, and the problems that you'll see in mechanics and materials is that you'll be given some sort of frequency. So in your car, if you look at one of the gauges, it'll say RPM and RPM stands, it's a frequency, it's a cyclic frequency, which we will call F, just like your RPMs, which stands for revolutions per minute. This has, this is units of revolutions per second 
or the number of cycles per second, and which is really a way to say how many circles, how many complete circles, or how many loops can you make in one second. And this is the same, one cycle per second is one revolution per second, and this is the same as one hertz. Now the difficulty usually is that you're given this in revolutions per minute or revolutions per second, and you've got to convert it to angular velocity so you can use this relationship here. And so the conversion between, let's say, one revolution per second to this radians per second, one revolution is one complete circle, and one revolution is two pi radians. So no big deal, this is simply 2 pi radians over revolution. So this is the conversion in order to get to radians per second. 2 pi radians per second. All right, before we get all into an example problem, you know, it's important to think about what or how this engine is connected to a shaft, which is turning, and then to something else right here. Okay, so I'll just, for now, I'll just make that fixed. And what this thing does is that when you cut and look on the inside from this engine right here, from this engine, if I cut this, this internal torque associated with the power is essentially this internal load here, this torque. And this is related to the power of the engine divided by the angular velocity that's associated with the turning of the shaft. And this is that torque, and this torque just like this internal torque, we want to convert this into a shear stress. And in order for us to design it, we're going to apply a basic design relationship. So here, this torque causes shear stress. So our basic design relationship is this tau applied less than or equal to tau allow. And we're going to substitute into this relationship this T rho over j, the polar moment of inertia, assuming this is some sort of circular shaft, whether it's hollow or solid, and this allowable stress associated with the material. And we know that in a circular cross-section, regardless of whether it's hollow or solid, the maximum shear stress due to torsion occurs at the outer edge, this radius. And so a lot of textbooks will call that distance C or R. In any case, this max, this outer radius, if we call that C and we replace this location so that here, this looks like T times C over J less than or equal to tau allow. And our design process is all about identifying this relationship right here, this C over J, which we could rearrange, okay? This thing right here, we could rearrange and just say, hey, this, what we would like to do when we design something is we would like this J over C to be greater than or equal to T, the torque over tau allow. And what we've done here is lump all the properties associated with the cross-section geometry into one variable. And if you do this with beams with the moment of inertia and the furthest distance from the neutral axis, we call it a section modulus. And so here, if you will, this would be like an elastic section modulus, okay, this J over C. And you can choose the appropriate ratio of polar moment of inertia to outer radius that satisfies this relationship and thus your basic design relationship. For us, if you understand the basic design relationship and understand that torque causes shear stress and the way that we convert torque to shear stress is as follows, this T rho over J, you're in business. All right, so let's see this example problem. 